If you'd like to set up pricing in the system, we have two different ways to handle pricing. So the first way is to set up the price at the time of fuel, and that's going to be using the pricing tool located under settings and pricing. This is going to allow you to select each fuel type code and then send a certain price down to your fuel site controller so that the any future transactions will be fueled at that given price that you set. This can also be set differently for different sites. So you'll want to go in here and configure this for all of your sites. If you would like to reprice transactions and you're using like a proprietary card, not a fleet card, Visa card, MasterCard transaction, then you have the option to simply reprice those transactions after the fact. So if you're not charging for fuel at the time of fuel and you would like to simply create the price, you know, at the end of the month for say the, you know, average of fuel amount or the, the highest amount that you were, you purchased fuel for, for that particular month, then you can also come into the system and reprice transactions uh, retroactively after they have already completed fueling. So depending on how you would like to price your transactions will really determine what kind of setup you would like to use. For any sort of site that's not using proprietary cards and they're only using, you know, network cards, then we'll want to make sure that we're using this pricing tool here. Once again, that's under settings and pricing. This is going to show you a list of products on the left hand side. So this is going to be the name of the product. This is the product fuel type code that it's using up here. And then you have all of your different products that you're dispensing for this particular site. If you're looking at the wrong site, you simply have a site selection option here and you can jump to a different site and you'll see that that list may be different on the second site. So this is all based on what fuel type codes you're dispensing and what, uh, what the current price is that's set for those sites. So for example, this site has a price of $1 for unleaded. And if we would like to update that, we can simply just come in here and say, I would like it to be $2.50, for example. So we just come in here and type $2.50, and then we're going to hit send price. Once we send the price, the price is going to update on the right-hand side, and this is the last updated price that we have sent. So if you want to come in here next time, Next time, the price should be at $2.50, and we can come in here and update the price again, and it will also reflect the price. Um, the reason we have this over here on the right is if you happen to delete the price and you don't remember what the last price was, then you could simply reference this chart over here. Um, once again, you'll want to do this for any of your fuel type codes that you're dispensing. One thing to understand is that the pricing in the DX fleet application is based on the fuel site controllers configuration and setup. So if you do not see the particular fuel type codes that you are dispensing here in this list, or if this list only has one code, then we'll want to make sure that we have your fuel site controller set up correctly. Uh, the initial installer may simply have not set up the tanks on that fuel site controller and that's why we may not be seeing those you know products showing up in the list so if that happens then there's several different methods that we can go through to you know fix this problem one is you can contact our global support team and they can assist you with updating this list you could also contact your installer that configured your fuel site controller and they could either do it remotely through the application or they could come out on site and change those uh, configurations Basically, we just need the configurations on the controller to be matching what's in this application in order for everything to work. Um, so if that's the case and you don't see them here, we can simply resolve it by setting up the tanks and the fuel type codes in the fuel site controller so that they are being displayed in this application. So you could do that in the application under the site settings. So if you go to settings sites, you go to edit your site. Now we have our tank and pump configurations. So you'll see here that we have tank one and tank two as unleaded and premium. Those are the tanks that are currently configured on this site. And those are the product codes that are being displayed in the system. If we were to say 
add a third tank and then let's do let's do a different product let's say code one diesel and then save this now when we jump back over to pricing and we're on this particular site we're going to have now three codes for code one diesel now that configuration that we just did is a you know, simple way for you to fix this list if you wanted to see a product that you are not currently able to see. However, we will want to set up the controller to match that setting because if somebody were to read your settings later, it will overwrite that setting with the one that's in the controller and you may lose this product here in the list because it's just not simply set on the fuel site controller. The other way we could change it is we could update those those tank codes and everything in the application and we could use our sync page to then send the site settings back down after we've made and updated those changes and that will update your fuel site controller with the latest changes that you've added in the application just note that if you do this you know obviously you're sending a bunch of settings down to your controller it can change the way that you are fueling so if you make changes or you didn't back up the controller previously you know it could potentially lead to an issue if you don't know what you're doing so i would recommend contacting support if you're uncomfortable or unfamiliar with this process it's totally okay um, we do have a global support team that's dedicated to assist in these kind of things as well as your distributor or installer that configured the system can also help you out with these kind of things um, so just something to note that uh, we'll want to make sure that the fuel site controller is configured correctly um, and then under the pricing tool, we have basically just that list and we're going to just put in the price and then hit send. Um, once that price is sent, then your future transaction should show up at the correct price. The other way that we can price transactions is some clients that we have are not charging for fuel at the time of fuel. They're simply using the system to generate a report based on the transactions that were done, say, previous month. So in that case, they have a little bit more flexibility as far as the price on the transactions go. They just want to know how much fuel was being dispensed. And if they would like it at a certain price, then they have an option to reprice existing transactions. Now, repricing isn't going to work for network transactions. So if you have a Visa card transaction or a, a fleet card transaction, uh, you can't simply update the price here and it will charge that client uh, you know, more than they paid at the time of fuel. It doesn't really work like that. So these are for proprietary cards only. So local card file authorization is what we're talking about. So if we have proprietary cards, we want to update the transaction price using this reprice tool. We can go to transactions and reprice. Now we have a list of options uh, that's fairly similar to what we were just seeing, but we have the ability to reprice based on a previous date and a range as opposed to just changing the fuel type code for future transactions. So here we would want to select the date range uh, for the transactions that you would like to reprice. So for example, if I want to reprice last month's transactions, I can just simply come in here and say the starting day of July to the last day of July, uh, the 31st. And now we have an account option. So you can reprice based on account. So if, for example, account 001 is going to be charged at a different price than account 789, then we could simply just reprice these or we could just reprice these. If everything's the same, then you can simply select all and we can reprice everything at the same time. So once we define the range of transactions, so this is going to say every transaction between the 1st and the 31st for all of our accounts, we are going to reprice. And then we jump over here on the right and now we can say which codes are we going to reprice and at what price are we going to change that for. So for example, if unleaded was set to a dollar previously, so all the transactions showed one, you know, say the gallon amount at one dollar and then the total is the same. So like if you have 10 gallons at one dollar, the total is going to be ten dollars. If we want to change that to two dollars, we could just simply say for unleaded, I would like this price to be two dollars. And then down here at the bottom, we have a reprice button and you would hit reprice. Any transactions in that range with that account for that fuel type code will now be updated. So now we're going to see 10 gallons at $2 and a total of 20 gallons. 
One thing to consider when you're talking about repricing is you do lose the original price for that transaction. So if you had previously had the price set to say $1.73 on the 1st and then on the 5th it was $1.80 and then on the 10th it was you know $1.90, then you are basically now changing all of those for that date range to, to $2.00. And there's no way to revert back. So you just want to know what you're doing and, and make sure that you don't create a problem that you didn't have previously by repricing stuff that you needed the original values for. So you'll want to just make sure that you kind of understand the process before repricing um, because there's no way to really revert back. Once those totals are all up to date, then there's really not a way to easily revert. So We'll come in here and then so we've got the unleaded as $2. If we wanted to change a different code, so say number five, uh, which is diesel, we could come in here and say we're going to set that one to say $2.12 per transaction. And then you could reprice all of these at the same time. So you can use any codes that you want here and any price that you want and then hit reprice. And then when you generate a report after the reprice, it will show the new dollar amount that we have changed. Uh, you can also do a combination of both of the procedures. You could set the price at the time of fuel, but then if you decide that you need to go back and uh, reprice some of those, you can reprice the proprietary transactions after the fact if you needed to. Um, so depending on how you'd like to set up the system, all of these options are available to you. And that is how you use our pricing tools.